Dinictus walked plant-grade, unlike modern felids. Its mode of life was similar to that of a leopard. It was probably not so particular about its food as its descendants, since the reduction of its teeth was still in the early stages and Dinictus had not forgotten how to chew. In its own environment, it would have been a powerful predator. Its body structure and hunting adaptations suggest a more solitary hunting style. Hoplophonius, though not a true cat, was similar to cats in outward appearance, though with a robust body and shorter legs. The name means murder weapon, referring to the bony growths or protuberances that are thought to have been present on some species of this genus. These bony growths may have functioned as a form of protection or display, possibly used in intraspecific combat or as a defense against predators. One of the most recognizable aspects of Usmalus is its large upper canines. These teeth were elongated and curved, resembling the saber teeth of some saber-toothed cats, although it was not directly related to them. These elongated canines were adapted for puncturing and killing prey, and its overall skull shape suggests a predatory lifestyle. They eventually became extinct, possibly due to changes in environmental conditions, shifts in prey availability, and competition with other carnivorous mammals. Africanictus is thought to have had an omnivorous. This genus is a basal form of cats, hyenas, and civets. Its small size indicates that it must have lived in a wooded environment, hidden from larger and more efficient predators than itself. The masked palm civet is a nocturnal solitary predator that is occasionally active during the day. It is an omnivore feeding on rats and birds as well as on fruit. The major threats for the masked palm civet are continued habitat destruction and hunting for bush meat. It is widely offered in restaurants in southern China and is also eaten in Vietnam. They are often victims of illegal animal trafficking to meet the demands in China and Vietnam. 100 civets were confiscated in April 2021. When alarmed, the animal sprays a secretion from its anal gland against the predator. The binturong has a distinctive appearance with a shaggy fur and a bear-like face. One of the binturong's most remarkable features is its prehensile tail, which means it can grasp and hold on to objects. This adaptation helps the binturong move through trees and navigate its arboreal habitat. They are excellent climbers and spend much of their time in trees. They are primarily nocturnal, this behavior helps them avoid competition with other diurnal predators. They use their scent glands to mark their territory and communicate with other binturongs. They are common in zoos, and captive individuals represent a source of genetic diversity essential for long-term conservation. Major threats to the binturong are habitat loss and degradation of forests through logging and conversion of forests to non-forest land uses throughout the binturong's range. Being the largest vivarid currently known to ever exist, giant civet grew to about the size of a small leopard. Its dentition indicates it more than likely was strictly carnivorous, in comparison, living civet species are observed to be omnivorous instead. Because of its size and dentition, the living animal is thought to be an active predator. The African civet is primarily nocturnal and spends the day sleeping in dense vegetation, but wakes up at sunset. It is a solitary mammal with a unique coloration, the black and white blotches covering its coarse pelage and rings on the tail are an effective cryptic pattern. The black bands surrounding its eyes closely resemble those of the raccoon. Other distinguishing features are its disproportionately large hindquarters and its erectile dorsal crest. It is an omnivorous generalist, preying on small vertebrates, invertebrates, eggs, carrion and vegetable matter. 
It is one of the few carnivores capable of eating toxic invertebrates such as termites and millipedes. It detects prey primarily by smell and sound rather than by sight. Common genets have a slender body with a long tail. They have a distinctive coat pattern with a grayish-brown base color and a series of dark stripes and spots. Their fur is often prized for its quality. These animals are primarily nocturnal, they have excellent night vision and rely on their senses to hunt for prey. It has a diverse diet that includes small mammals, birds, insects, fruits and even small reptiles. They are skilled hunters and use their sharp teeth to catch prey. They give birth to litters of usually two to four kittens. The kittens are born blind and rely on their mother for care and nourishment. When Allen described the aquatic genet as a new genus and species in 1919, he named it Ospornictus passivra. It was reassessed in 2004, and based on molecular evidence is now considered a geneta species. They primarily feed on freshwater animals. They possibly detect the movements of the fish with their whiskers, or attract the fish by patting the surface of the water with their whiskers. It is unclear whether there are any major threats to aquatic genets. Dinocrocuta was an exceptionally powerful predator and scavenger, capable of preying on animals much larger than itself. Though it is currently unknown if it was solitary or social, it was probably an able hunter of such animals as the tusked rhinoceros Kilotherium. It had a robust build and powerful jaws similar to modern hyenas. It was larger and more robustly built than most modern hyenas. It had a short mane of fur along its neck and shoulders and likely had a bear-like hump on its back. Unlike many of its relatives in the order Carnivora, the aardwolf does not hunt large animals. It eats insects and their larvae, mainly termites. One aardwolf can lap up as many as 300,000 termites during a single night using its long, sticky tongue. The aardwolf's tongue has adapted to be tough enough to withstand the strong bite of termites. The aardwolf lives in the shrublands of eastern and southern Africa, open lands covered with stunted trees and shrubs. It is nocturnal, resting in burrows during the day and emerging at night to seek food. Though primarily a scavenger, large specimens of striped hyenas have been known to kill their own prey, and attacks on humans have occurred in rare instances. The striped hyena is a monogamous animal, with both males and females assisting one another in raising their cubs. A nocturnal animal, the striped hyena typically only emerges in complete darkness, and is quick to return to its lair before sunrise. Although it has a habit of feigning death when attacked, it has been known to stand its ground against larger predators in disputes over food. It features prominently in Middle Eastern and Asian folklore. In some areas, its body parts are considered magical, and are used as charms or talismans. Brown hyenas have a social hierarchy comparable to that of wolves, with a mated pair and their offspring. They live in clans composed of extended families of four to six individuals. Clans defend their territory, and all members cooperate in raising cubs. They are primarily scavengers the bulk of whose diet consists of carcasses killed by larger predators, but they may supplement their diet with rodents, insects, eggs, fruit and fungi. The major threat to the brown hyena is human persecution, based on the mistaken belief that it is harmful to livestock. 
Farmers find brown hyenas scavenging on livestock carcasses and wrongly assume that they have killed their property. Similar to the modern-day striped hyena, the giant short-faced hyena was probably primarily a kleptoparasitic scavenger of the kills of other predators. It scavenged for food, probably preferentially so, because it was a heavy-set animal not built for chasing prey over long distances. In this respect it would have differed from the spotted hyena of today, which is a nimbler animal that, contrary to its image as a scavenger, usually kills its own food, but often gets displaced by lions. The spotted hyena is a highly successful animal, being the most common large carnivore in Africa. Its success is due in part to its adaptability and opportunism, it is primarily a hunter but may also scavenge, with the capacity to eat and digest skin, bone and other animal waste. Its social organization is unlike that of any other carnivore, bearing closer resemblance to that of Cercopithecine primates with respect to group size, hierarchical structure, and frequency of social interaction among both kin and unrelated groupmates. However, the social system of the spotted hyena is openly competitive rather than cooperative, with access to kills, mating opportunities and the time of dispersal for males depending on the ability to dominate other clan members. Females provide only for their own cubs rather than assist each other, and males display no paternal care. Spotted hyena society is matriarchal, females are larger than males, and dominate them. The Javan mongoose is mostly solitary, males sometimes form social groups and share burrows. Females are pregnant for up to 49 days and give birth to a litter of 2 to 5 young. Males can potentially become sexually mature at the age of 4 months. They eat mostly insects but are opportunistic feeders. In Sumatra, the Javan mongoose is wild caught for the pet trade. It was the most commonly offered species at wildlife markets in Medan during surveys between 1997 and 2001. Liberian mongoose was discovered in Liberia in 1958. Little was known about the animal, except what local natives related. They typically forage in packs consisting of three to eight individuals, but larger groups have been observed. Their diet consists of earthworms and various insects. Banded mongooses have a distinctive appearance with a slender body, short legs and a long, bushy tail. They are named for the dark bands or stripes that run across their back, giving them their characteristic banded appearance. They are highly social animals and live in groups called troops. A troop can consist of a few individuals to over 50 members. They exhibit cooperative behaviors, including group foraging, grooming and providing protection for each other. They also engage in sentinel behavior, where one or more individuals keep watch for potential predators while the others feed or rest. They are known to live near human settlements and can sometimes be considered pests due to their scavenging behavior. Ring-tailed Vontsyra are very agile and good climbers. They are quite playful and are active during the day. Their habitat consists of humid forests. Their diet is mostly of small mammals, invertebrates, reptiles and eggs, but they occasionally eat insects and fruit. The population of ring-tailed Vontsyra has decreased by 20% during the period 1989 and 1999 due to habitat loss.
The giant fossa was larger than the fossa, but otherwise similar. The two have not always been accepted as distinct species. When and how the giant one became extinct is unknown. With its large size and massive jaws and teeth, it was a formidable, puma-like predator, and in addition to smaller prey it may have eaten some of the big, now extinct subfossil lemurs that would have been too large for the modern species. Fossas inhabit a variety of habitats in Madagascar, they are agile climbers and spend a significant amount of time in trees. They are skilled hunters and primarily feed on lemurs. They are considered apex predators on the island, playing a crucial role in controlling the population of their prey. They are listed as vulnerable due to habitat loss and fragmentation. They are also threatened by hunting and potential diseases from domesticated animals. Its taxonomic classification has been controversial because its physical traits resemble those of cats, yet other traits suggest a close relationship with viverids. Its classification, along with that of the other Malagasy carnivores, influenced hypotheses about how many times mammalian carnivores have colonized Madagascar. With genetic studies demonstrating that the fossa and all other Malagasy carnivores are most closely related to each other forming a clade, recognized as the family Euplaridae, carnivorans are now thought to have colonized the island once, around 18 and 20 million years ago.